Welcome everyone to our side tier chat. We are so excited to have the Baltimore Blast cheerleaders here today. And just a quick intro so you guys know what to expect. We will start with uh, welcoming everyone and a panel discussion with the Baltimore Blast cheerleaders. We have a fun activity called Cricket Crawl. It's based in DC and Baltimore, so very timely. Then we will do a live Q&A. So if you're on the WebEx event with us, please chat us in the Q&A uh, chat. Or if you are tuning into Facebook Live, please comment on that feed and we will get all of your questions answered. And then we'll wrap up and let you know what's coming up next. So just a reminder for everyone who is tuning in live on WebEx with us, just a reminder that your camera and microphone will not be on until the live Q&A portion. If you do have a question, we will let you know and it's okay to put your camera and microphone on. Um, please only ask one question at a time so we can make sure everyone has a chance to submit their questions. Uh, if you're on Facebook Live, just submit them there. And also, this is being recorded, so if you're on WebEx and you do choose to participate, this recording could be used for future material. And that is all. So I will hand it off to Wendy, who's going to introduce the Baltimore Blast cheerleaders. Hi, everyone. I am science cheerleader Dr. Wendy, and I am super excited because today we are going to have science cheerleader Tanisha, who is a former Baltimore Blast cheerleader, do a uh, an interview slash panel discussion with some other Baltimore Blast cheerleaders with degrees and careers in STEM. Um, I was telling everybody earlier before the session started that I always really like working with the blast cheerleaders because they're so energetic, their performances are amazing, and they all have so always have so many STEM people on their team. It's just amazing. So um, I'll hand it off to Tynesha, who's a chemistry patent examiner. Um, so go science cheerleaders. Um, and I, I also really want to emphasize that for aspiring professional cheerleaders out there, there are more options out there than just basketball and football. Um, this is a great example of a really amazing team with a lot of incredible, successful women on it who are just powerhouse performers. Um, so Tanisha, can you give us, first of all, a little bit of background on what professional arena soccer is before you start the interviews? Sure thing. Thanks, Wendy, for the introduction. Um, as Wendy said, my name is Tanisha, and uh, I am a chemistry patent examiner at the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Um, so with the BLAST, they are part of the Major Arena Soccer League. And uh, they, their games are typically, I think, from August until uh, anywhere until the next year in April. And uh, basically, they are professional indoor soccer. And the games are so riveting. They're so exciting. And um, the fans are the best. So uh, it is a great opportunity to, um, as far as the cheerleaders, um, to perform because you get the dance aspect. first professional dance experience and um, it was it was an outstanding um, experience so uh, if that is something that you're interested in uh, please give it a uh, you know into you know take it into consideration because it is a wonderful opportunity um, to be able to perform and also um, get involved in, in other sports you know so um, but now we also have some current uh, last year leaders here with us um, and um, we're just going to go ahead and just, you know, talk about, um, you know, blast and cheerleading, which is awesome, right? <laughs> um, so I guess first we will start with uh, Kylie. Um, if you can give us your background and, you know, talk a little bit about, about your background in uh, science and in cheerleading. Sure. So, hello, I am Kylie. I just finished my third season with the Baltimore Blast. I graduated from Virginia Tech with my Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, and I focused in transportation and then more specifically traffic. So, I analyze traffic, um, which is really fun because I get to literally play in traffic. Um, all the things that your parents told you not to do, <laughs> I do it. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Um, so, I analyze Anything 
I guess my focus is kind of what is out there existing and then how can we make it better? So what is really cool is you hate this signal down the road and you get stuck at it every day and you're like, I need someone to look at this. Um, you can actually contact the state agency and then we can go out there and look at it. So um, that is a little bit about what I do. Um, and then I didn't really get into dance until um, high school. I grew up as a competitive gymnast. And then in high school, I switched, I was introduced into dance and I absolutely loved it. And I did cheerleading, like the stunting and tumbling cheerleading as well. And then in college, I continued with dancing. And then um, after college, I thought that was it. That was it for me. Like, I didn't really, I wasn't introduced into the pro cheer world yet. And so I found Baltimore Blast just because I had some friends that did it and I love everything about it. So I just finished my third year with them. Awesome. And congratulations on, uh, you know, making it back for a veteran season. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Dr. Sheridan, it is uh, your next. What um, is your background as far as with cheer and, um, or how'd you get started into cheer and uh, your background in science as well? Yeah, for sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Sheridan. I just completed my rookie season on the blast. Um, so in terms of science, I went to Georgia Tech and got my undergraduate degree in math. And then from there, I wanted to take some time and kind of figure out my path a little bit. So I worked at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab for a year. And they were like, hey, you should really go to grad school. You should get your PhD and then you should come work for us. And I was like, okay. So I went and I got my PhD in Earth, Atmospheric and Planetary Sciences, where I mostly studied volcanic rocks on Mars. And that was my thesis. So it was really awesome. It led me all over the world. Um, and I even got to like touch and collect rocks outside of this world, which was really neat. Then after that, I ended up not getting hired <laughs> at the place that told me to go <laughs> to grad school. Um, but I went and got my postdoc. I finished, I did my postdoc at the University of Idaho, and now I work as a remote sensing uh, scientist and engineer at the Aerospace Corporation. And then in terms of dance, I've been dancing since I was little. And I started dancing. Uh, I was on a team in high school, and then I was also on the Georgia Tech Gold Rush dance team. And when I graduated, um, dance just kind of fell by the wayside for me because I really wanted to focus on the, my career. And since I felt like I was in a good position and I had some free time, I was like, let's go back into it. And that's how I found Blast. Hmm. Awesome. Very nice. And, you know, things, sometimes things don't work out and that's the best thing that could happen. So um, it's good that you got redirected onto a path that now you were, seem to be in love with. So that's awesome. Okay, and then next we have Sarah. Um, if you could, you know, give us your background in cheer as well as in science and how you got started in them both. We'd love to hear about it. Okay, hi, I'm Sarah. I just finished my second year with Baltimore Blast. Fun fact, um, Kylie is my corner captain. And whoop, whoop to the corner <laughs> captains. Um, <laughs> So I, uh, I'm a recent addition to STEM. I didn't um, graduate with a STEM degree. I graduated with an international affairs degree and then <laughs> um, totally transitioned after college. Um, I, initially, I initially did something that was very similar, but um, as I opened my doors and kind of realized what I was interested in, cybersecurity became very interesting to me. So. I pursued a path of um, not yet uh, additional schooling, but just certifications and sort of like continued continue education path. And it's been really fun. I'm so glad I went for it. And um, I definitely foresee this as like the, the all of my future career basically. <laughs> so I'm really happy, um, but yeah, I did not initially start out there. And um, um, for cheer, I, basically danced for a little bit when I was younger, um, didn't really have a way forward in high school. Um, so high school and college didn't really dance at all. But after I graduated college, decided there's something that I absolutely had to keep doing. And so I uh, went back, started taking classes. I found Baltimore Blast and here I am. 
the rest is history. That's his history. <laughs> That's, that is awesome as well. Um, my brother's actually in cybersecurity. Um, so, um, you know, and sometimes things that are unexpected, again, that may not have been initially what the path that you decided to go on, but I think, you know, once you find something that is a really good fit for you, like the sky's the limit. So, um, you know, that's, that's awesome. Last but not least, we have Miss Colleen. Thank you. you. A little bit about your background in cheer and science. That would be great. Absolutely. Good evening. <laughs> Hopefully it's evening wherever our, our viewers are tuning in from. It's certainly the evening on the East Coast. So we'll go with good evening, everyone. My name is Colleen. Super excited to be here with some of my fellow cheerleaders from the Science Cheerleader Organization, as well as my fellow Blast cheerleaders. A little bit about my background in science. I've just always had a natural interest in science, even from a young age. So when I you know, I was getting ready to go to college. I actually initially started out as a biology major, but long story short, I changed my mind and I switched my degree to fire protection engineering at University of Maryland. So I graduated with my undergraduate degree and then immediately after I stayed on and I did a research based master's program where I studied material flammability, which is what my thesis is in. And then once I finished up with my undergrad and graduate studies, I started at my current job, Lake Tanisha. I also work for the government, but I am with the United States Department of Defense and I'm a facilities fire protection engineer. So most of the work that I do is with um, fire protection code compliance and I work primarily with fire alarm and sprinkler systems. And I also get to do a little bit of academic outreach for children in my community. So that's something I really enjoy is doing more of events like this, where I get to speak to a lot of younger people about science and try to get them like really excited about all these great opportunities that are out there. So that's the quick snapshot of my STEM background. In terms of my truly and dance background, I feel like it's like a little bit of everything all over the place. So it all started when I was six years old. I danced in a studio for about six years and I absolutely loved it and fell in love with performing from my very first dance recital. And I just loved everything about it from the costumes to the makeup, seeing my family in the audience. And I did that for a while, but um, I was also playing you know, field hockey and basketball and lacrosse. And my parents said, you know, you have to pick one or the yeah. other. So for better or worse, I went to the other sports. But fast forward to high school, I was interested in trying out cheerleading. So my sophomore year, I tried out for the JV team and I made it. And I cheered as a winter competitive cheerleader for three years in high school. And then fast forward to college, I would have loved to be a cheerleader in college, but I didn't have the tumbling background. But as fortune would have it, I stumbled across the University of Maryland Gymkhana Troop which is a novelty performing gymnastics group where all of the members on the team pledged to be drug, alcohol, and tobacco free. So we would do these really cool, really fun, high energy shows throughout the school year. And I did that and got to continue my love of performing, which was a really rewarding and fabulous experience. So then fast forward to graduate school when I wasn't doing the Gymkhana troupe anymore, I felt like there was something missing in my life, but then I came across an audition opportunity for the Bay Area Shuckers dance team, which was a professional local basketball team in the area. So I did that for three years, took a little bit of a break. And then in 2017, actually with Tanisha, I cheered for the Chesapeake Bayhawks in Major League Lacrosse and absolutely loved that. And then this year I was very fortunate to make the Baltimore Blast cheerleaders and I just finished my rookie season with Sheridan. And another fun fact I wanted to tag on to Sarah's is Kylie is not just our corner captain and my squad buddy, but Sheridan, Kylie, and Sarah and I are all in the same corner. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What are the odds of that? <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Um, Colleen, um, I had the same thing happen to me as far as uh, with my parents growing up is whenever they said you had to pick one thing. I had my hands in every single pot and they were like, you got to pick something. You got to stick with something and pick something because sometimes it's better just to focus on one thing so that you can improve and um, you know get stronger and uh, you know perfect your skills and your talent so um, but um, yeah I think that's pretty funny that you know your pants are like focus on something but obviously you made the right choice choices 
I am all very right. happy. I am very happy with all the choices that I've made yeah. throughout my life. Things I think definitely worked out in the best way possible. It always does. It always does. We'll, we'll stick with you, Colleen, and um, I'll ask you what interested you in STEM. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> <laughs> I but. Yeah, but to be ser to be a little more serious, I do think that part of what I was interested in when it came to STEM was just what I was naturally drawn to. I think we all have, you know, na things that we're naturally passionate about and interested in. And for me, it was STEM. But as I've gotten older and I've really just like learned to appreciate the field that I'm in and the other STEM fields out there even more, I realized that the thing that I find most exciting and enriching about STEM fields is that there's all these new technologies and changes that are coming out every single day, especially in today's you know, society that we live in. And I think that's super exciting and really cool. And these technologies that are being developed are changing people's lives and making a huge difference in people's lives. And I just think that's so powerful. And that's what I find most exciting about the STEM fields that are all out there. Yeah, I completely agree with you, uh, especially as a patent examiner. So we uh, review patents and applications that are, you know, the up and coming uh, novel inventions. And that to me is like extraordinary to see what's out there, what people are working on and what people are thinking. So it's the innovation of science that that's it's never going to be stagnant. It's always going to change. So that is uh, very interesting. And I completely agree with you, Colleen. All right, Kylie. Tell us what interested you in STEM. So I think my answer is going to be a little different. Um, I really didn't like writing in school. I was not good at writing. <laughs> so like the um, <laughs> any class that required reading a book and then spitting the facts back out, I couldn't do it. I was not doing well in those classes. <laughs> Um, but the classes where you had to figure it out, the ones, you know, the science classes where it was an experiment or math where there was, there was an answer, just get to the answer. It was a big puzzle that I really enjoyed. It was like, I know there's something I got to go to. I just found myself with those, write a five page essay. I was just procrastinating, staring at my screen, like, write yourself. <laughs> I say that, but with my job now, I am writing, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> But I definitely just was very drawn to figuring out the puzzle, I would yeah. say. That's what I really appreciated. Yeah, the problem solving aspect of STEM careers, like that's something that we all deal with, you know, whether it be, you know, doing experimentation or, you know, anything. It's trying to solve a problem that, you know, will better our lives uh, one way, shape or another. So, uh, yeah, the problem solving aspect is, is, is very key. And that's actually something that also drew me in as well. Um, cause I love that challenge of, you know, figuring out getting from point A to point B, you know, and what's the midway and how do you get there? So, um, yeah, that's, that's awesome as well. All right, Sarah, what about you? Tell us what interested you into step. My answer is also a little different. Um, I, I like it. <laughs> I'm super competitive and I just really wanted to like as a person like I want to know the stuff that everyone else doesn't know and I wanted to, to differentiate myself from people especially the market I was coming from like there are so many people competing for the same jobs and I was like how am I going to differentiate myself um but on you know on a more like personal note like you said Tanisha like, I I love problem solving and that is very um, critical to my personality and the way I operate in a workplace. So it was something I gravitated towards more and more was like becoming the person in my workplace who like understood these things. Um, and then that translated eventually to, you know, more job opportunities. So it was a way of like a little self-serving too. I was like, I want those better jobs. I want the higher paying jobs. I want to be in charge one day. Um, and so, yeah, I, I wish I had figured it out a little bit earlier that, you know, tech and, and cybersecurity in particular was where I wanted to be, but it kind of works out um, because having the background that I did and then developing the skills I have now, I can sit in between those two parties and that um, has been really rewarding and has worked out a lot for my employers as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Better late than never. So at least you found it and, you know, and like I said, it's, it's working for you. So it's never, 
that's never, it can, you know, it's never a bad thing. It's, it's good that you found it and, you know, you keep going. So, but good job. All right, last but not least, Dr. Sheridan, can you tell us what interested you in STEM? Yeah, for sure. So it's kind of similar to Kylie and Colleen where I had a natural interest and um, I also really love problem solving. But I'm also super tactile, so I, I've always loved arts and crafts. I've always loved like tinkering around with things, right? <laughs> and so it was kind of the perfect mix of like something that I love, something where I can be creative, something where I can do something with my hands, something physical, right? Um, and then solve a problem all at the same time. So I just thought that was the coolest part. So combining all of those parts about me um, ended up being just the perfect job for me. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure you have a lot of tangible aspects um, with your job, so that probably um, you know satisfies that you know for you of like yeah. oh, I can do this and yeah, so yeah, right now I'm supposed to be well pre-COVID. I was actually hired to calibrate satellites, so I would have been in the lab and like traveling all of the time and doing a lot of things with satellites. And now, um, now I'm not. I'm doing a lot of software engineering now, but. Yeah, it would have been great, right? To, to yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always fun. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's still building a puzzle. So we still get that aspect of it as well. So if we haven't picked up on it, Sheridan is like the most interesting person ever. <laughs> <laughs> you all are. You all are. You all have something different to bring to the table. And, you know, I asked you guys the same question. You guys all gave me something completely different, you know, so. Um, you guys are all interesting in your own. Uh oh, I lose everyone. All right, we'll stick with Dr. Sheridan. And um, I guess, yeah, you can tell me what interested you in cheer. I know you said you also did some in, um, in college uh, as well, but uh, what else did you do as far as uh, with cheer? With cheer, I guess I left out that I was on my high school cheerleading team, which is oh. helpful. Um, but yeah, why did I get interested in it? Um, dance? Okay, so I did think about this question earlier today. And I remember when I was little, my mom was always, she's funny because I played soccer for a while, I played volleyball for a while, and she was like, do you like those sports? And I said, no, not really. And she said, yeah, you're not really a team player. <laughs> and it was really funny because I... I really didn't excel at team sports. So like soccer, I would just kind of like hang out on one side of the field because I wasn't really, I don't really want to chase the ball and like, you know, do the whole thing. And then I, I tried to play softball for a while, but yet again, I just sat in the outfield waiting for the ball to come to me, right? And then with, with dance and cheer, it was kind of the perfect combination of an individual sport, but also a team sport, right? So I got to shine and do my own thing as an individual, but then I got to work together with the whole team. And I felt that's final, I felt that was where I finally shined. And I was like, oh, I am a team player. It's just with specific teams and that can highlight who I am. And then I can bring out who these other women and men are too. So that's why I really like dance and cheer. And that's totally understandable because you get to be your own artist. I mean, you still, when you're on the team, you have to do, you know, you have to look like each other and look like the person next to you, but you can still give your own artistry to it. So you get to be an individual and as well as work with others. So um, that's a very good point. All right, Sarah, tell us what interested you in cheer slash dance. <laughs> um, so many things. I feel like I, obviously at a very base level, it's like you love to dance, you love to perform, and you want to be on a team. So, you know, cheer is an option. But, I mean, for example, I'm on other teams as well. I, I um, dance salsa and bachata, and I have yeah. teams for those. But, you know, so the question becomes, like, well, why cheer on top of that? And, um, yeah, I love, first of all, I love being pushed really hard to your, like, peak fitness levels, your peak mental levels. <laughs> to um, be able to synthesize all this choreography in your head, your <laughs> rapid fire learning. I love being on a team. I love the other women I'm on the team with. Um, and ultimately it also comes down to cheers unique in the fact that you are part of this large orchestration of things going on that you that we missed this season because we didn't have games with all of our blasts. 
but it's like you're at the stadium and um, there's the players, there's the crowd, there's this whole beautiful orchestration going on that you get to be a part of and not just a part of, but like an integral part of for a day. And that um, is really exciting and I love that. Yeah, the, um, I know, as I said before, the Blast fans are, they are all about it. They're all in, but, you know, the Blast is a good team. <laughs> so we're a winning team, and uh, that's always a good thing. And it's nice to be a part of an organization that, uh, you know, that we all work together as a family. And, you know, the as far as, like, the community and the players and the cheerleaders, like, we all come together, you know, for the greater good of winning which is always great, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dr. Sheridan, tell us what, oh wait, you already, we already did you, sorry. Although it was interesting, but <laughs> Carly, go ahead and tell us what interested you in cheer or dance. I really- you were like... a gymnast. Yeah, I was like, you had yeah. a gymnast background, so. Um, tell us I how really you got like into that. Sarah and Sheridan's answer a lot. Um, I think I became a gymnast because, I mean, I was three, so it was one of those things that my mom put me in, um, probably because I was annoying her bouncing off the walls. Um, and so I just did that for forever, and it just became who I was. Like, I was the gymnast. And then so when I quit, I was really scared. I was like, what? This is all I've known. What am I going to do? And my high school dance teacher brought out the love of dance in me, and I loved performing. I just felt my best when I was performing. And I really feel like that confidence grew every year. So every time I stepped foot on the stage, I felt better. And now when I step on the field, I feel better. I just feel my most confident when I'm performing. Um, but at the same time, it's exactly what the two girls before me said. I love that I get to be a part of the community, a part of the atmosphere. I love the interaction with the fans. I think we can all pretty much say that's like the best part of the game. Um, and just having that support and sisterhood is everything. Like I talk to these women every single day. So they really just become your family and your biggest support system. Yes, that is so true that um, there's uh, some of my, my blast sisters actually, they were my first group of sisters and I still talk to them to this day. I just talked to them right before <laughs> uh, we had this and um, I've been in their weddings. They've been with me through some of my you know lowest moments and highest moments. So it really becomes a family. And I, I can imagine that you appreciate it more, especially during the pandemic because it does get lonely and um, and and you're able to interact with them. Just, you know, give them a phone call or a text or even when you're at practice. I know you guys have practiced with social distancing, so it's nice to be able to to, you know, have that experience with someone else and have that sisterhood. Um, I actually don't have sisters. I have two brothers. Well, now I have sister in law in laws, which are my sisters in loves. But growing up, I only had my brothers. So that was one of the reasons why I decided um, to go into cheer slash dances because I wanted I wanted some more family. I wanted some more sisters, and um, I like that bond and having that and having that extra support system. Um, so, um, all right, what do we got next? Colleen, you have to tell us what got you interested in cheer. Yeah, so for cheer and dance, I mentioned this in my intro, but uh, when I first started dancing in the studio and would do my recital every year from that very first recital, that's where I really fell in love with performing, like some of the other women here mentioned. I just feel like when I'm in front of an audience or a group of people and I get to show what I know and dance or cheer, I really felt like that's where I could come alive and I just naturally found a passion in that. And in terms of the cheerleading, I think being on a team such as the Blast or the other teams that I've cheered for, the aspect of the, the team atmosphere is really great. Um, I think the other panelists mentioned that as well. And that's something that I also enjoy. And with a team like the Blast, it's always fun to cheer for a winning team. So that adds <laughs> another layer of excitement that that I really enjoy. So the opportunity to just perform is something that I value and enjoy and love very much. But also for dance specifically, I feel like there's just such a beauty in the combination of movement and music. I've had some really rough days, but when I start to dance, I feel like my spirit is just completely replenished 
during those really challenging times. So that's something about dance specific that I also really love. But in terms of cheerleading, whether it was in high school or professional cheerleading that I've been participating in, you know, in my adult life, that whole team atmosphere of it is really meaningful. Going into this last season, I was hopeful that I would develop some sister-like relationships with other women on the team, and hands down, all of my expectations were surpassed. And yeah, as I said, you'll you'll be talking to them for a lifetime. And it's also nice to be a part of, you know, the milestones, you know, I've had friends that have had babies, you know, on my, again, my blast sisters. So, um, you know, weddings, all of that. It's, it's just really nice to, to, you know, continue on your journey, even if you're no longer on the team together, to continue on the journey of life together. And that's, there's nothing more rewarding to that in, for me than that, you know, just having those relationships. So. I completely right. agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what is our uh, Sarah? Let's start with you on this one. Tell us about your favorite thing about STEM or experience with STEM. Um, I've had the opportunity recently to um, design a. I'm just gonna just to put a like a really low level uh, a process for my company for the team that I work with and I'm just to put this in context I'm the I'm the only female on my team um, of like 50 <laughs> and I'm also the youngest so it's like a very weird situation to be in sometimes but I love that um, the knowledge that I've gained uh, as recently as like this year has been able to put me in a position to do that and. I don't know. It was, it was just really fun to uh, design an entire uh, process that we were going to go execute, you know, a week later and be responsible for that. So sorry, that, I feel like that's kind of a lame answer, but no, <laughs> that's not at all. I mean, that's that's like amazing <laughs> that you had yeah. to like rise to that challenge, you know. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, it was a great. Right, Kylie. Oh yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Kylie, tell us one of your favorite things about STEM or experience that you've had in STEM. I think that just a big thing for me, I'm probably going to say this 800 times today, but it's just really the relationships that you make. Um, so just listening to these three, like, and you, like listening to all of you guys, it's just, we have a really amazing network of people and everybody does really incredible things. So I, think I realized I wanted to do engineering. Both my parents are engineers, so that helped as well. Um, but I was doing just a freshman class project and we were talking about natural disasters and somebody came up to me, I, I said, I have to interview somebody, what do I do? And they said, well, you should interview a civil engineer. They studied natural disasters and infrastructure. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So during my interview, he was telling me about how he flies a drone into uh, buildings that have collapsed and what could they have done to ensure that it wouldn't collapse the next time there was an earthquake, something like that. And I was just mind blown. And I think that's when I realized I want to do something like that. That's really inspiring. So just hearing about all of the different projects and really incredible things that people have done, it's really inspiring. So I think that's my favorite part. Yeah, there's definitely this panel has tons of inspiration. So yeah, it's that it, it is very interesting. Colleen, what about you? Tell us your favorite thing um, or favorite experience uh, with STEM. Yeah, my favorite STEM related experience would be defending my master's thesis and successfully passing my master's thesis defense because I'm sure Sheridan can relate to this from her PhD studies, but it's so much work you spend years and years doing research mine was only about two years sheridan's was probably i'm guessing closer to four so i can't even imagine five oh, years wow. yeah. yeah so <laughs> so girl <laughs> right <laughs> i have mad respect for her and dr wendy anyone out there who has a phd because i i it took about two years of research and i said i think i'm gonna stop it after this but it was a lot of work like just in those two years it was a lot of blood sweat and well not actual blood and sweat and tears but metaphoric blood sweat and tears and it was probably one of the hardest things that i've ever done in my life so to be able to see everything all come together 
for the thesis defense when I got up and presented my research in front of my family and some of my friends and lab mates to be able to have that experience of presenting was something I also really enjoyed because similar to how I enjoy performing, I'm one of the oddballs who actually enjoys public speaking. So that was a fun <laughs> aspect about my thesis defense that I enjoyed too. And I tried to make it fun. I brought in breakfast for everyone and tried to make it a whole little event. So the event itself was really exciting, but the, I'll never forget the feeling of one of the members of my committee coming out after the deliberation and shaking my hand to say congratulations that I had passed. It was just a really special experience that I'll always remember and cherish very much. That's probably a weight off of your shoulder, like, ah, oh, absolutely. I did it. Yeah, I did it and it's done and you did the best that you could and, you know, it was, it was perfect. So that's wonderful. Awesome, Colleen. Last but not least, Dr. Sheridan. Tell us your favorite thing of, like about STEM or a STEM experience that you had that like pops out to you. Yeah, I have a couple of really incredible experiences. And my favorite thing about STEM is that I've been given these opportunities to experience these things and then I get to share them. So the first thing that I wanted to share was about being a member of the Mars Science Rover team. So the Curiosity Rover uh, from a few years ago, not the most recent one. I was on that science team and it was really incredible to work with a team of people from engineers to scientists to um, all kinds of management. There were all kinds of people and to be able to do that was just phenomenal. And then to be able to share that, right? I got to go all across the world and tell stories about rocks on Mars, which was really cool. And then um, I also got chosen to be a representative of my community to go to Antarctica as a scientist and collect meteorites for um, NASA and the National Science Foundation. And it was amazing. It was a cool experience. I got to set foot in a place that very few people get to go. I think maybe 30 people or less have been to the one spot that I've been to. Um, and then I know, and then I get to share that, right? Like I got to go to high schools and tell them all about it. And these high schoolers are like, I just think it's the whole thing. And that's my favorite experience is, yeah, I've gotten to do some really cool things, but being able to, to share that and see the faces and see all the people, like, I wish I could see the panelists right now. And I could be like, I could feed off of them and say, yeah, this is all the cool stuff. And what are you interested? I can share it with you. Um, but those are my favorite parts. Oh yeah, I was totally like blown away. You know, it doesn't matter what age, like that's that's incredible. You know, like you said only 30 people, like, you know, more than 30 people have been in that spot. Well, wow. like, yeah, probably even less than that. So I went to uh, McMurdo Station in Antarctica, which is where I stayed for about a week and did some training. But then after that, we got deployed to the deep field. And so we went about probably 30-ish, miles probably more than that away from the south pole uh to a place yeah which is the antarctic mountains and we just slept in a tent for 40 days and i mean probably yeah probably even less than 30 people got to go to where i went and it was amazing wow. i got to sleep on the ice and hear the ice crack every night and see the birds flying and it was really incredible yeah, that sounds out of this world. Well, you know, out of, out of this country, you know, it sounds incredible. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, to be able to share that because not everyone's going to be able to do something like that. So that's probably fulfilling to be able to share that with other people. So I get it. That's pretty cool. Awesome ladies. Y'all are rocking it out. All right, we got some more questions. Uh, I guess this time we will start back with Kylie. Um, tell us about how do cheer slash dance and STEM fit together for you? So, okay, I think my answer is that it's all a confidence thing for me. So when I was in college, I really, really <laughs> doubted myself. I remember <laughs> the weed out classes in college, they got to me. Um, I was almost wed out. Um, <laughs> Sharon was like, oh, me too. <laughs> Yeah, so I just remember like calling my mom and on the verge of tears, like, there's no way I can do this. I don't think that I'm going to be able to get through college and an engineering career. And she just told me, yes, you can. Gotta believe in yourself. You gotta get through these classes. 
And then I, once I did get through those weed out classes, whew, which was okay because they weren't directly to my career. It was like the physics and stuff, which I cannot, I can't do physics. <laughs> um, but then I, like the next semester was on Dean's list. So it was really just that, like, you got to push yourself. You got to get through that, um, get through over the hurdle and things are obviously going to get much better, but it was all about just knowing that I could do it. Um, and again, having the support system, my mom at the time, just telling me like, just do it. <laughs> you can do it. It's the same thing with cheer for me. Like there's so many times where I feel like, am I like, am I, I don't know, getting too old for this. I don't necessarily think I am, but you know, you have those doubts. Like you always just think, am I good enough for this? Like, should I really be doing this? And then I have, you know, this incredible support system sitting with me and they're like, uh, yes, like stop doubting yourself. Um, so I think that it really is about, um, you're going to come across all these hurdles all the time in your life. And it's just about having that confidence to move forward and stop doubting yourself, which is really hard to do, but something I think we can all <laughs> work on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. And that's good that you have your parents, you know, you said both of them were engineers, so it's good yeah. that you had their support and um, to be able to have that encouragement. Cause sometimes you just need a little bit of a push to, yeah. to get to the next level. Um, but you always have that confidence there and you just really have to like conquer it and believe in yourself about like, you know what, I can, I can do this. And whether it be an audition or, you know, be going through college or, or anything, you know, you really have to like, just believe in yourself that you can, you can achieve anything really. Mm -hmm. All right, Colleen you can tell us about, you know, how cheer slash dance and STEM fit together for you. For me, I think the biggest crossover that I have seen in my life between cheerleading and STEM is the importance of being a good team player and working in teams. There's, I would be willing to say that with full confidence that there is no great scientific effort that ever happens through just one person. And I think a great example of that is all of the countless hours and hours of research and teams that have focused on COVID-19 efforts. That's not just, you know, Dr. Anthony Fauci. There's a whole team behind him who are helping to make these really incredible things happen. And that's been the case in my career, too. I, when I was doing research in grad school, I certainly did not do that alone. The projects that I work in my current job, I do that with a multidisciplinary team. And certainly being a blast cheerleader, being a good teammate and working well with others is super important. So I would say the team atmosphere and the team spirit of working in a STEM field and working as a cheerleader go hand in hand. Nicely put, nicely put Colleen. Uh, Sarah, can you tell us about, you know, how uh, cheer and dance and STEM fit together for you? Well, logistically not well, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's where being, um, having really strict boundaries with yourself and with others with your time comes in handy. And that's something that I developed uh, my first year as a cheerleader was be like it is it is very uncommon with people our age to not watch a lot of tv to like on the weekends you're not just spending all your time with your friends like you have things you need to go get done i need to go practice i need to get ready for this game um so that's that's different but if you're strict with yourself and your time it's it works out you know you can have a full-time job in a, a demanding field and you can be a cheerleader it's fine um, philosophically, I mean, it works out really well because if you're a go-getter, you're a go-getter in cheer and dance and you're a go-getter in your career. Um, I feel like that personality trait re like reads across um, in all facets of your life. It's not just going to come through for, for dance. And then um, with like personal relationships wise, you know, I don't, not all of my coworkers know that I'm a cheerleader. Yeah. Um, my, my boss knows, my close coworkers do. But they're really supportive. They love it. You know, they don't, um, they don't, uh, they don't ask too many questions. I don't think they want to get too personal sometimes, but it's fine. I tell them when I have big things going on. And um, if anyone ever sort of like questions it, I just 
I treat it like, well, why, you know, why is this even a question? Why would you even, why would you think that I can't be both? Like what, <laughs> what makes you think that I can't do that? And um, that kind of reaction or response to them usually will get the response that I want, which is they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, this is, this is not a big deal. This is, this is normal average everyday life. And that's what I want more of in, in the world is um, women doing, or just, you know, just people doing both, people do, living their best life in both ways. So, yeah. And you totally can do that, you know? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a balancing act. I'm sure all of you can agree to that. It's definitely a balancing act between, you know, your jobs or school and cheer and dance. But um, but if that's what you want to do, you can totally do it. So, um, so never <laughs> let that uh, in intimidate you. And I think it was Kylie was talking about, you know, you think you're too old. Girl, I was in my 30s when I was on the blast. So you are never too old to do anything as long as as long as you're in good shape, <laughs> you know, you can handle it because we all know it's physically demanding. But as long as you're in good shape and you know you got the mental fortitude to do it, you can do anything that you want to do. So um, but it is all about balancing for sure. All right, Dr. Sheridan, uh, you can tell us what we say, um, you yeah, know, how do you cheer slash dance and um uh stem fit together for you yeah um so i think of a i think of it kind of like a problem solving skill again uh sarah svena kind of mentioned this earlier where you get to push your mind to the ultimate limit right i get push my mind when i'm working but then i step back from work and i go to dance and i push it again to try to remember choreography and the sequences and Fitting it all together, right? So I think that's the part, that's how it kind of all fits in for me. That sounds good. And yeah, that's it is again, like we said, with the problem solving, like, you know, it's 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 challenging, but it's also rewarding once you get the answer, you know? And so yeah, that's it's always a good aspect about um about you know STEM in general. Um, but with that said, uh, speaking of like what we you know love about science, um, let's start with Colleen with this one. Can you tell us uh, when it was like the first the first thing that made you love science? Like when yeah. did you really love it? Sorry. You know what? I know this might not be an exciting answer, but I don't know if I've ever really had you know one definitive moment where the light bulb just went off in my mind and I said, I want to be a scientist. It, it was just one of those fields of study that I just always found super interesting. You know, um, math was a little bit of a challenge for me at first, but once I grew more confident when I was in about fifth grade, that's when I, when I think I really started to more definitively realize that I love science. So I wouldn't say that there was one specific instance where I said, Yep, absolutely. I love science. This is it for me. But I would like to, on that note, share an interesting experience I had that was a big turning point for me in terms of something Kylie mentioned earlier, which is confidence when it comes to STEM fields. So I specifically remember when I was in fifth grade, I was hardcore riding the struggle bus in math class. I was not doing well on my tests. I was just feeling real down on myself. And I was just kind of programming myself like so to speak in my mind that I was bad at math and I'll never forget this as long as I live but I had one night my dad sat down next to me and he's like I want you to say I'm good at math but then he kept making me say it over and over again with stress on different parts of the sentence so he would make me say I'm good at math I'm good at math you get the picture uh. and from that point on things just got so much better. So I, I go back to that experience as a specific moment where I really feel like I learned to love math specifically. For me, I think the interest in science has just kind of always been there, but that was a big turning point for me in terms of another subset of STEM, which is math. Yeah, and you don't, um... You know, as long as you don't doubt yourself, you, you can achieve it. And as you can see, you overcame that, you know, that fear and that difficulty, because I'm sure you're still, you know, dealing with some of the math. Well, you had to deal with it through school um, and perhaps you're dealing with it now. But 
uh, you know, as long as you believe in yourself and believe that you can achieve it, it may be harder, you know, than it is for somebody else, but that's okay. You just have to work a little bit harder at it, but you know, you can always like get through and break through the barrier and, um, you know, get to the next level, which you did. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I, I guess I Kyle bring up. I was just going to say, I think you bring up excellent points and I think that believing in yourself is everything. Oh yeah, totally. Absolutely. Kylie, when did you realize that you uh, fell in love with STEM? I have to kind of agree with Colleen here. I think that um, I'm not really sure I had like one definitive moment either. It was just kind of in school. Um, those were classes that I got excited about. Um, I didn't necessarily get excited about maybe English class because my vocabulary wasn't the best, but I got excited about going to math and science. Um, and I think that for me, similarly, I had mo I did have a moment with math, I think. I think um, in school, maybe it was common to not really like math because it is, it's not as simple. Well, uh, let me not say simple because I'm not good at it. It's not just reading a book and then being able to process it. I'm not good at that. Um, but a lot of my friends were. So in math, I really like that there were equations. And again, it was that whole puzzle and figuring out how to get from A to B. And in, I think it was ninth grade, um, I was my algebra two teacher, the way that he taught his class, I was like, everything clicked for me. Everything, I was like, this is amazing. I love finding X and I thought it was so dorky, but I absolutely loved it. And um, so from that moment on, I was like, yes, whatever career I choose, it's got to have math in it. This is what I want to do. That's that's awesome. It's so funny. But, you know, I feel like even if it's not a, like a particular aha moment, it's something that drew you to it. And I feel like, you know, it's like following your passion. And as long as you follow your passion that, you know, you'll, you'll just like, you know, you'll go along with it. And, um, and I feel like not that it's like easier, but you know what I mean? Like you love it and you're interested. So you're going to keep going towards right. it. Right. So it was easier for me. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Sarah, what about you? What, when did you realize that you, uh, loved STEM? So first of all, I just feel like I kind of lied to you guys earlier when I said, um, yeah. I, I mean, it's true. I pivoted to um, cybersecurity and like a technical background uh, way later after college. But I, a turning point for me with STEM was in college, I had an internship um, with a, a, a contractor for a Department of Defense. And I continued that internship for two years. And it was there that um, I, was, I was there as an, as an intern because I was a Chinese linguist and they needed interns to sit there and, uh, you know, do like really like low level data processing for them. And I, while I was there, I got mentors. So for a big thing for me was having mentorship from um, people who were just like, saw, saw a young kid and were like, I'm going to, I'm going to teach them how to do a few things. Um, and then that relationship developed like personally between us where I was actually learning a lot from them. And that was the first time anyone had ever opened my eyes to the way, um, you know, becoming technical could change your completely change your role at a company or I, I could see how they did different things and the other people who weren't technical, you know, they, I felt like what their job was boring. These people had like the cool jobs. <laughs> so <laughs> that was, I, I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be just a linguist. I want to do that. So um, that was a big deal. And I realized this now, I, I really never thought about this before, but I did everything kind of backwards. Like I, it's like I jumped into the pool backwards because I saw something that I wanted to do. And I've spent, you know, for me, four, five years now, like retracing the steps of like how to get there. So like started from like seeing the point of the spear and knowing that's where I wanted to be. And then like walking backwards, developing the skills I needed, the foundational skills I needed to to understand how to do that so that's been um amazing so yeah it wasn't like a, a i knew i like loved stem but it was because in fact in high school i was not good at science um but yeah just just a lesson in seeing something that i that i was interested in and then like going backwards and and developing those skills <laughs> 
And that's okay. You know, everyone's path is different and how, how they get there. But again, it's like the end goal, the end result, you know, and as long as you're happy where you're at, that's, that's the end result that I would want. Right. So I know for me, my aha moment was in, um, I was in elementary school and, um, it was my, um, uh, uh, my science teacher in elementary school. And we used to do all kinds of experiments and, um, I'm probably dating myself, but we would play with like tangrams and things like that. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but again, it was very tangible. So I love doing that kind of stuff. And I, it, it was always very fascinating to me again, to be able to try to, to get the shapes to fit together and, to, or, you know, we would, we would do like those, uh, the volcano with the baking soda, like all of that stuff was so much fun to me. Like I. And that's what I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to go to school and learn how to make bombs. Like, that was what I wanted to, like, those, those experiments and explosives is what drew me into, um, into STEM. So, um, but again, it's like what you find that you're passionate about and what comes easier to you, you know? And, you know, what are you willing to work towards, like, as far as with the challenge? So, um, but yeah. And Dr. Sheridan, what about you? Tell us when you realized you fell in love with STEM? Yeah, um, mine was kind of later in life, I think. So I remember when I was applying to college and I, you know, as a high schooler, I didn't really know what a major was. So I'm on, looking at the application and I was like, mom, what's a major? And she was like, oh, it's just something you're like really good at. And I was like, okay, well, I'm really good at math. I'll just be a math major. And it was always my backup plan, to be honest. It was just like, well, it's my major for now, but I'm going to change it, right? I'm going to change it. So like two years in, oh, I'm going to change it. Like, what else are you going to do? I don't know, but I'm going to do something else. And then I got my internship at NASA and that's when things like turned around. I think it was a big confidence issue. Like I was always going to change my major because yeah, I thought I was good at math, but am I actually good at math? Right? Like Kylie was talking about this earlier. And so I didn't really feel like I was ever good enough. And then I got my internship at NASA and I was like, holy cow, people think I'm actually good at this. <laughs> and you know, it was a lot of validation for me. <laughs> and then when I went to my internship and I was actually successful and I got invited back, I was like, heck yeah, I'm awesome. I can do science. I can do math. I'm going to do this. And that's when it all really clicked. I was like, okay, I'm going to get my, I'm going to go to grad school. I'm going to get my PhD. I'm going to do science. I'm going to do all the things. Right. Um, so I think it was that moment of getting that validation from NASA. Right. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge pat on the back, you know? <laughs> Well, this is our last and final question. Um, we have gone through uh, pretty much all the questions. So thank you again, ladies. But um, but yeah, the last and final question, I guess we will start with Sarah. Tell us one thing you hope that the audience will learn from today's chat. That there's a multitude of paths to get anywhere you wanna go. If, if that includes STEM, then that's awesome. Uh, if it doesn't, that's it's fine. But I, I've encouraged every every person who's come to me from internship for, for my field. I've encouraged them to look into some kind of technical, um, uh, something to add on to their career to make them a little bit more diversified. And I don't know. I just I hope that people see like there's a way forward and there's really exciting, challenging, awesome opportunities that lay ahead if you choose that. And yeah, that's why I hope people learn. Agreed. What about you, Kylie? I think it's just that uh, you can do it. So even if you're nervous about whatever it is you want to do, um, I think we've all been there and we have all, I think, been very successful. So you can do it. Very nice words of encouragement. <laughs> and Dr. Sheridan, tell us, you know, what you think when, what people could gain from um, today's chat. Yeah, I completely agree with Kylie. It's just, I think that my story could be your story and who knows your story could be even more amazing than my story, right? Like you can do whatever you put your mind to. You just have to work for it and you'll get there. So I think I saw someone in the chat and they said, you are all so inspiring. And I just 
her name is Darlene. And I wanted to respond and say, you're so inspiring. Like you can do this and you're amazing, right? So that's what I hope everyone gets to hear. Yeah, we can all draw inspiration, you know, from someone. So yeah, it's always it's always good to hear you know people's stories. Colleen. So as with any science cheerleader event that I ever attend, my biggest hope for those in the audience to, as their takeaway is for them to just walk away with a new perspective on what a scientist does and what a scientist looks like. That's honestly my favorite thing about being a science cheerleader is ch challenging that stereotype of what people, especially younger people think of when they think of what does a scientist look like? And I definitely remember when I was in grade school, we had an assignment one time where our assignment was draw a picture of a scientist. I would be willing to bet that what I drew was not unique in the sense that I drew an old man with crazy hair and a lab coat holding a, a Bunsen burner or a beaker and about to blow something up. And I think that a lot of young people especially might have an Albert Einstein looking idea of a person in their mind when they think of a scientist. So I hope that the viewers walk away from this and see that a scientist can look like me, can look like you, can look like anyone. Anyone can be a scientist if they are so passionate enough about it to go and chase after their dreams and make them a reality. So well put, Colleen. That was perfect. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then I saw that we had a question in the chat from Darlene. Did you want to hit that one before we adjourn for the evening? Oh, we did. Ooh. Let me see. If I so, Darlene asked, um, what's your favorite cheer dance experience or what's your favorite science experience? We already, I think, touched on the science experiment, but really quickly, do you ladies and Tanisha, if you want to jump in too, um, talk about what your favorite cheer dance experience is. Uh, Tanisha, do you want to start on that one? Uh, sure, I guess, um, <laughs> as far as like, uh, I mean, experience, like, I don't know, like, what we did like a game day something is that yeah anything okay. so okay. like for example some of my favorite cheer experiences are was my one of them my first year on falcons i was standing in the tunnel waiting for all the players to run out and i remember thinking like i'm here i'm actually doing this and of course i loved every game day i loved every performance i loved every appearance but just that moment of realization like i did this my hard work paid off and i have one moment like that every single game it's usually during the national anthem when everything's quiet and we're standing there and it's it's just like oh my gosh i'm so grateful to be doing this i'm such i'm part of such an amazing sisterhood like you guys said this is such a unique opportunity i'm so happy to be here so anyway i guess it's like a repeated experience for me but anything related to cheer or dance that you guys have you know your favorite moment uh, well, for me, so when I was on the blast, um, the last year that we did calendars, I was uh, the last calendar cover girl. And um, yeah, and I remember at a, a particular game, so we would have the kids come and sign our calendars, or, or we would sign the calendars for the kids, rather. And uh, one kid came up to me and said, I don't think you signed my calendar. And I said, mm, no, I didn't. And he said, well, how do you know? Like, you know, cause I didn't open it up at all. And I said, or he asked me, well, how do you know? And so I took it and signed it. And he was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And he ran to his friends. He's like, you won't believe it. The cover girl signed my calendar. The cover girl signed my calendar. And he ran to his mom, the cover girl signed my calendar. And so it just made me feel like, wow, I, I'm just, you know, here dancing in the corner, like I'm, you know, I'm no one special. And he thought like I was this like most important person. So that always like stays like near and dear to my heart because he was so excited that I signed his calendar. So that's probably one of my favorite blast experiences. That's so sweet. I love those moments where you like, I have this on science cheerleaders too, and I'm sure Colleen and you can relate like the when you're talking to a kid and they get enthusiastic about something that you're doing or your background, it's it's really like heartwarming and, and validating too. And it's like really awesome that you can inspire somebody and make them happy. Um, Colleen, what's your favorite dance or cheer experience really quickly? You pretty much hit the nail on the head in terms of what my thoughts were for my favorite experience is that repeated experience, whether you're a veteran on a team or if it's your first experience on a brand new team is that first game day experience. 
you spend weeks and weeks, if not months ahead of time, getting ready for that first home opener game and to finally be out there on the field or on the court, getting ready for all of the action and excitement of the game is just a really exciting and special experience to really have all of your hard work and your dedication coming to fruition and becoming a reality in that one moment. So that would probably be my answer too, is the first game. I always get the tinglys during those moments, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Dr. Sheridan, what's your favorite cheer or dance moment? Yeah, I think obviously game day is the best, um, but so I didn't get to go on the field this year for um, blast because we didn't have uh, a season. So I'm hopefully going to get that next season. Um, but <laughs> but my favorite was definitely just game day at Georgia Tech. It's like it's riveting to be such a fan of you know my school and then to be able to be a representative of that fan base and then to be on the field where the fans are like hoping they can be. It's just amazing. I'll never forget it. That's awesome. And actually, so fun fact for our audience, I actually went to Georgia Tech too. And Sheridan and I were talking before the session started. Um, you said your first year on the dance team was my last year in college. And I had done four years on the dance team, but then at the time was cheering for the Atlanta Falcons. So we just sort of barely overlapped. But it's, I mean, it's a really cool stadium to to dance in. And I remember my first game in college on the dance team standing in the end zone on the field and there was a flyover that was super low i was like i can i feel like i can read the part numbers on the bottom of this jet it was just like an incredible electrifying experience um kylie what's your favorite cheer or dance moment i think the uh first and obvious one is just making the team um that was incredible but i have to agree the coolest thing ever is when you you have a fan um, somebody at the game comes up to you and they're like, I remember you from the last time and I watched you on the field. That's just the coolest thing ever. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's like really heartwarming. Like the little old me, you're a fan of me. That's awesome. And it just goes to show like how much of an influence that the cheerleaders can really have on people. And that's the goal of the science cheerleaders is to use our platform to get kids interested in science and show them that they can achieve it just like we did. Okay, finally, Sarah, what's your favorite cheer or dance moment? Um, mine is from last year when we did the game where we uh, performed the Junior Blast Cheerleaders dance and had all the, um, I think there was, I don't even know how many young girls there were, um, but we we taught them a, a dance that Kylie choreographed <laughs> and we, uh, we performed that at the game and it was so hype because all the parents were there and they were so excited and uh, my boss my boss and his daughter actually came to that same game so it was cool it's a cool moment because i was like yeah you see me kill it at work and here do it all <laughs> so that was fun that's awesome that's so great that your boss gets to, got to see you do that too um i something you said earlier that really really resonated with me is asking the question well why wouldn't i be able to do both why wouldn't i be able to be both and I think that's so incredibly powerful to not even pose that question to the world, but also to yourself. We talked a lot about how confidence is such an important part, just believing you can do it. And so that's a question that I definitely had to reconcile, and I'm sure a lot of you did too. Why wouldn't I be able to do both? And you absolutely can. We definitely just proved that. Thank you so much, Tanisha, for leading this discussion. You did an amazing job. Thank you, Kylie, Sheridan, Colleen, Sarah, um, and the Baltimore Blast Cheerleader team. This was an incredible discussion, and we really, really appreciate your insight, and I'm sure that everyone will find it as inspiring as I did. Um, so we're going to throw it back over to Sam really fast for her to give us an overview of our citizen science activity for this session. But thank you so much, ladies. All right, so in the spirit of the Baltimore blast, we wanted to share a activity that is currently active in the Washington DC and Baltimore area. It's called cricket crawl. And the reason why it's important is because we actually don't know a lot about crickets. So surprisingly, we don't have a lot of information about the different species and where they contribute to plants and the animal food chain. So all you have to do is log on to scistarter.org slash cricket crawl DC Baltimore. 
visit the website, look at the six different cricket species, and then walk around your neighborhood and take pictures. And just like that, you're a scientist too. So if you want to learn more about other citizen science projects, other ways that you can become a scientist, make sure to check out scicer.org or sciencetrailers.org, and we will direct you to our favorite activities. So with that, again, please stay in touch with us. These are all of our social handles. Uh, make sure to tag us if you perform any chairs or draw your own scientists. And stay tuned. Our next SciShare chat will be in May. And that is all for today. Thank you so much to the Baltimore Blast. You guys have been super awesome and super inspiring. So thank you. Before you guys leave, can we do a go science share really fast? I'll count to three and then we'll do, we'll do go science. Ready? One, two, three. Go, go science. science. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much again. This was a great session. Thanks for having us. This was Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you, ladies.